everybody, welcome to News by Muse. It's time for Secrets of the Octopus, something that a lot of us here at Muse have been waiting for and we are looking forward to. We have Alex Chanel, who's a biologist, who's a part of the series. I got to ask you right off the bat, how was it to work on this series? Because it's so fascinating, so interesting, and the audience is going to learn so much about octopuses that they've never learned before, or octopi, I should say. Octopuses, you were right the first time. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, it was creating Secrets of the Octopus was such an incredible journey and it was filled with life-changing moments. I'd studied um, these critters for over 15 years and yet I was seeing behaviours out there in the wild that I'd only read about and also ones that I'd never heard about. So there's a lot of revelations in the series, a lot of secrets that we reveal and they took my breath away. So I hope that they take our audience's breath away. Yeah. And then, like I mentioned, it's so fascinating to see and to learn about all these dis different species of octopuses, especially in Australia. I mean, what are some of the things I, cause I think kids are going to love this. What do you think is going to really touch the kid's mind to be able to follow and enjoy and explore more about these animals? I think the, the octopus offers this perfect balance between something that is so alien. And as humans, we're drawn to the alien. You know, you have this animal with eight arms, three hearts, blue blood and a beak. But yet what the series reveals is that octopuses are vulnerable, that they're intelligent, that they have the capacity to feel emotions. And so we're seeing these glimmers of these traits that we might normally only attribute to, say, a chimpanzee or an elephant or a whale but we're seeing it in a very different looking creature and so I hope that we really offer this completely different perspective on um, the octopus to all our viewers. Yeah and the one thing that fascinated me was the physiology which I never knew about mm -hmm. how some can actually form and match coral mm -hmm. for protection that was just like I knew you, they changed colors but never to the point of texture yeah absolutely I mean fascinating yeah they can look super spiky and then in the blink of an eye turn really smooth um and because they don't have any bones in their body they can also change so that they can the, the ultimate shape shifter they can change into any shape yeah exactly and I gotta ask how was it to work with James Cameron on this on this production because that's something that he always takes it to another level where it's just every one of these series is just so much more intense, so much more fascinating and does something with it that just really engulfs you and wants to be a part of that every second of the day. It was an honor to work with James Cameron. He He's a true ambassador of our oceans. He's always been so interested in our blue planet and he has his own incredible experiences that you can see we chat about at the end of episode three um, with some deep sea species. And so to have his um, creative direction on the series really, like you said, just makes the entire series just pop. Um, and I love to learn some personal things about James as well, that the octopus has inspired his own films um and so yeah I think it was a, a beautiful collective effort um and having the different type of creative directions in the series it is what makes uh Secrets of the Octopus really stand out yes exactly and it's also about conservation and being able to protect our our, our coral reefs our oceans what do you think people are going to take out of this to show about the importance of protecting our oceans and protecting not only octopus octopuses but uh, also other animals and and uh sea life in the oceans yeah i mean i think that's a great question we have to you know it, it, it's not news that our oceans need healing they cover over 70 percent of our planet and yet there are converging crises of climate change biodiversity loss and welfare risks to marine animals but really in order to heal our oceans we first need to be able to empathize with it and how do you empathize with a huge mass of water? Mm -hmm. Well, we need to think about and we need to connect with the critters it supports. Mm -hmm. So the creatures of the sea, from the smallest fish to the largest whales to the octopus, mm -hmm. you know, many of them are vulnerable. They possess intelligence and have the capacity to experience emotions. And so really recognizing those traits can help us 
dissolve this otherness of the ocean and remind us of our shared vulnerability and interconnection. And so what I really hope is that the octopus is a compelling ambassador to make people care about our oceans and mm. by extension, our own well-being. Right. And um, we've seen so much of how the effects of global warming have been on sharks and other species in the National Geographic series and others. What are the effects on the octopus when we see when we come to global warming that people may not know about? You know what? It's crazy, but we don't even know. So there are over 300 species of octopus and none of them have been listed as vulnerable or critically endangered. And that's not because they're not. It's just that we don't know enough. Mm -hmm. um, the scary thing about octopuses is I guess they live such short lives. So it's, you know, most of them live one to two years. And so any type of um, environmental effect like global warming, really high temperatures can have a huge effect on that current population. And then it's going to have this domino effect for populations to come. Um, so we just don't know. It's an area of research that needs attention. And that's fascinating that we that, that with everything that we're learning every single day that we still don't know about that species and mm -hmm. how it's go, how it's affected by this, which is it's fascinating to me because that's the, the science aspect of me is always interested to see what it is, especially with global warming. Since we're seeing, I mean, you walk outside, you see the effects, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you can't blow past it because we're seeing it firsthand now. Uh, of course. Yeah, you're seeing it in some of the locations that we shot at, you know, where Scarlet, the day octopus, lives. Lizard Island at the moment is suffering huge amounts of coral bleaching, and that's going to have cascading effects to everyone that lives on that coral reef. And that's something that I remember seeing in one of the other National Geographics in the past was about the coral reef and mm -hmm. the changes within the reef, some dying and some being mm -hmm. are okay. What have you seen so far in your explorations, especially in Sydney so far? Um, in terms of changes that I've, the that changes I've noticed. That you've noticed even just in the last couple of years. Yeah, I mean, we've had some really extreme type of weather patterns um, here on the east coast of Australia. So um, apart, <laughs> it's been really scary, I guess, the past few years. We were told, oh, we're going to have some cooler, wetter summers. So that's great, less fire risk. But then we had huge amounts of flooding. Um, so many people lost their homes. Um, some of those homes couldn't be returned to. They're still living on floodplains. But then the impacts on the environment as well. About 40 minutes north of me is a beautiful um, marine park uh, and the diving is meant to be incredible, but I've heard that it's just been completely destroyed because of the flooding and the runoff from the mountains. Um, and a lot of the critters that live in that area, particularly seahorses, um, have been impacted. And so, yeah, we're just seeing huge knock-on effects um, that are not just affecting humans, but everything else that we share our planet with. Yeah, I agree completely. Uh, I love to... That's why I had to ask, because I think it's important for people to know outside mm. of the area what's going mm -hmm. on as well. But before I let you go, I wanted to ask you a friend, Chris, a question. Paul Rudd, Ant-Man narrates this whole thing. What does it feel like to be that now you're a part of this series with an Avenger? And you're, <laughs> you're, and you're a real-life Avenger because of what you it do? It feels fantastic. I mean... Paul Rudd says my name over and over and over. How <laughs> is that not amazing? Um, and he was such a good fit. Like we were trying to get, I guess, because um, I speak a lot in it. So I've got the female voice. We were thinking, yeah, male narrator would really suit um, the series. But it, it, the narrator had to be quirky mm -hmm. and warm and playful because they're the characters that we want to really showcase in the octopus. And so he just, he really brings that type of nature into the series. Yeah. Alex, thank you so much for stopping with us. It was really a great conversation to talk with you about, about everything that's going on in our oceans and about the octopus, because Secrets of the Oc Octopus is going to be a big hit when it's on uh, National Geographic on uh, April 21st, a day before Earth Day. Yes, that's right. Thank great. you so much, Michael. Oh, thank you. And we'll send it, see you next time here on News by Muse.